We've spent the last three days being wowed by the natural wonders of Yellowstone National Park. We've thoroughly enjoyed its beautiful, natural swimming areas, been amazed by its geothermal activity, and discovered that the hype around the thrill of the wildlife drives is all too real. After realising that the southwest of the park is considerably more busy than the northeast, and teamed with our hiking plans being scuppered yesterday due to an epic thunderstorm, today we plan to get an early start, beat the crowds to Grand Prismatic Spring, do a small hike to a lookout over several geyser basins, and to curb that feeling of too many geysers, we're going to take a tour of the beautiful, grand and historic Old Faithful Inn. Good morning, welcome to our fourth and final day here in Yellowstone National Park. It is currently about 7.30 in the morning and we have decided to try and get a head start on things and come to the Grand Prismatic Spring here at the Midway Geyser Basin just because we know that it's one of Yellowstone's sort of prime tourist attractions and we kind of want to get here before the masses of the crowds arrive. However, that said, you can probably see the parking lot behind me and there's already quite a lot of vehicles here and also it's quite foggy as well, although it seems like the sun is making an attempt to break through that fog. So we're just keeping our fingers crossed that the weather's gonna get a little bit better. It all went just a little bit wrong. Grand Prismatic Spring is supposed to be behind us, but it's just so foggy and we can barely see it. This one little kid just walked past saying, where is it? <laughs> because it's so bad. So we've not had breakfast yet, so we're just gonna head back down to the parking lot, have some breakfast, get some caffeine into us, and just hope that the sun is able to burn through this fog and then we might come back on the boardwalk again. I am now all filled up with breakfast and caffeine and the sun seems to be burning off some of this fog so we are going to do attempt number two and hopefully we might be able to see Grand Prismatic Spring a little bit better now. I think this is about as good as we are gonna get all of the fog in. Uh, well, I suppose everything that we can see at the moment has lifted and it just seems to be the steam coming off of the thermal pour that is causing the poor visibility. We're kind of hoping that maybe if today heats up a little bit, it might make the steam a little bit better or a little bit better as far as photo opportunities go. So we've got to drive back this way anyway later on. So we might call into it this afternoon when it's heated up a bit. We're gonna go and check out some of the other geyser basins up this road. Behind me is White Dome Geyser. It does actually erupt in the same way that Old Faithful does, but the time at which it will erupt isn't as predictable as what Old Faithful is. We're certainly not gonna hang around to see it go off, but the reason why you've got the cone, the way in which you can see behind me, is because as the water does splurt out, it's picked up lots of silica from the volcanic rock that the water passes underneath. And every time it erupts, it just deposits more and more of the silica building up the cone. So the cone is constantly growing. But the other thing that it's also doing is it's depositing the silica actually inside of the cone and therefore the channel that the water is being pushed up through is getting narrower. So I think eventually at some point this is going to get completely cut off and it will stop being an active geyser. <laughs> Thanks. 
apparently the mud pots are in the spring are like super watery like really soupy like and they kind of splurt away quite a lot but as the water dries up as the summer goes on because it gets hotter the thicker they become so it'll be interesting to see it's like right at the beginning of august at the moment just to see what kind of state these mud pots are in As we drove back on ourselves, headed in the direction of Old Faithful, we passed a parking lot for Grand Prismatic Spring, but were immediately put off by the huge numbers of both cars and people. Instead, we made our way to Biscuit Basin, but even getting parked there was a struggle, having to drive several times around the parking lot before managing to nab a space. The basin itself was beautiful, with steam pools the most beautiful shade of turquoise imaginable, and charming geysers that bubbled away. At the far end of the basin, the boardwalk eventually became a trail which followed along a small creek through trees and opened out to Mystic Falls, an impressive 70-foot waterfall tumbling away from the Madison Plateau. We continued upwards to be rewarded with panoramic views over Biscuit, Black Sand and the Upper Geyser Basins. Curious by the view of Black Sand Basin, we made a quick pit stop and were surprised by how beautiful the colours were and were left impressed by the activity from the cliff geyser perched next to a small creek. to the Old Faithful Inn as they have free walking tours during the day. I didn't want to film during it but some of the highlights that I took for it I just wanted to give a bit of a, an overview as to the sorts of things that we were told on the tour. Behind me we have got the dining room and this area that I'm standing on this kind of balcony we were told that uh, back when the lodge first opened in sort of the teens and the twenties it was, there was actually a band that would perform here for the diners and unlike what you can see today with all of the individual tables and chairs, it used to be really, really long tables. Everyone would eat family style. So the food would get put in the middle of the table and then it would get passed up and down where people would take it off of their plates to then eat. Later on, after the people had eaten their meals, they would then come out into this main lobby that you can see here. And the staff who worked here would have been clearing away all of the carpet that used to be on the floor down there. And up sort of behind me, diagonally across this area, the band would then have moved across to there so that after the evening meal, the guests who were staying at this lodge were able to come out and have a bit of a party with the live music. It was very much a place to see and be seen, I suppose. It was for the wealthy elite, a lot of people who would come across from the East Coast. And they were able to come across because of the train line that was put across to Cody in Montana, so just across the border to the north of Yellowstone National Park. Apparently the train company had tried many, many times to be able to bring the train line into the national park, but Congress kept on saying no, that that was not possible, and therefore people would take the train across to Gardner, and then they would have to purchase a tour, which was usually a five-day tour, which would take them around the park, and the hotels, the lodges, were all situated very carefully so that people could stop and have lunch, and then they would stop and stay overnight, and then they would keep on going, stop again for lunch, keep on going, stay overnight in the next hotel, and so on and so forth. Whilst the hotels catered for the elite classes here in America, they did also have tented camps that were far cheaper so that people would get the same experience. But instead of staying in amazing hotels that looked like this, they would have instead been staying under canvas. Much of the furniture that you can see here in this hotel, such as the writing desk, and the armchairs and rocking chairs actually date back from the early days of the hotel, so anywhere between about 1904 through to 1911. Construction of the hotel started in 1903, in the June of 1903, and the architect and their workers worked really, really tirelessly to make sure that the roof was put on before the first of the snow, because the snow gets really, really bad here in this part of Yellowstone. 
Believe it or not, it actually opened up 13 months after construction began in 1904. And this was seen as a really, really luxurious hotel. So even back in 1904, the hotel had electricity, it had plumbing, it had heating as well. The architect, whilst it may seem a little bit silly that they have put the front entrance where you can see it here at the moment, not actually overlooking Old Faithful Geyser, which is kind of just behind me there, was actually quite sensible in what they did. If we just take a little bit of a wander up the steps, what we will realise is that as the people were arriving to the hotel in their stagecoaches, as they arrived, the very first thing that they were able to see was the Old Faithful Geyser. And then of course, once they were done with their vacation and they were departing, the last thing that they would see was also the Old Faithful Geyser. So perhaps the architect was actually onto something with the way in which the hotel was facing. In addition to the view of the Old Faithful Geyser, as people were arriving to the hotel and also leaving from the hotel, you may be able to see across the lobby behind me, a staircase that keeps on going up and up. Originally when the hotel was first built, this staircase would take you up to a rooftop terrace that would overlook the Old Faithful Geyser. But unfortunately, there was an earthquake back in the 50s that caused damage to it. By the time they had been able to get the funds to then fix the staircase, fire regulations then stopped people from being able to go up there because once you get above the third floor in this hotel, that then suddenly becomes the only staircase. So these days, the only people who are able to go up those stairs are the people who work in the hotel who go up there to put up the flags each day to raise and lower them. Two nights in a row we have come to this cafeteria and two nights in a row we've actually managed to get the prime window seats with no hassle whatsoever. There weren't any people sat here, we weren't needing to sort of hover until they were done. Um, I would highly recommend that if you are in the Old Faithful area, just come to the canteen that's inside of the lodge. The food is really reasonably priced, you've got some really healthy options and you just get an amazing view and I can't help but feel like where else in the world would you get something so unique such as Old Faithful going off and not have to pay an absolute premium to be able to dine with that kind of view. I'm really, really impressed with this cafeteria here.